Are we alone in the universe? Or is it bustling with life out there? A question which we have all asked ourselves. So far there are no answers. We can only guess. Life in the universe? Why not? We know nothing about the nature and appearance of any possible life on faraway planets. But one thing does seem certain. Life as we know it can only exist on solid celestial bodies, planets made of rock with running water. But how should we find out the planets on which life could exist among all the billions of others? At the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy in Heidelberg, Lisa Kaltenegger and her team are studying this question. We're searching for life in the universe, in other worlds, on exoplanets. That means on planets which orbit other suns. But exoplanets cannot be reached by humans like us. A journey there would take millions of years. So how can we find life on distant planets like these? Lisa Kaltenegger and her team know that life leaves traces, a characteristic fingerprint. Because every living thing depends on metabolic processes. It produces certain chemical reactions which can be found in the atmosphere of the planet. Humans and animals, for example, produce CO2 when they breathe and methane during digestion. And plants produce the oxygen which we find in large quantities in our atmosphere. All reactions together thus give the atmosphere a sort of fingerprint. The art is to track down this fingerprint across the light years, across these vast distances in the universe, a spectral light fingerprint of these planets, so to speak. It functions like this. If a planet passes in front of its parent star, the light shines through its atmosphere. If there is life there, then oxygen, ozone, methane and water would need to be in the planet's air, the biomarkers of life. With the help of spectral analyses, these molecules can be detected in the atmosphere. Ozone, for example, absorbs radiation at a wavelength of 9.6 micrometers. If there is a dip in the spectrum at this wavelength, it means that ozone is present on the planet. And the other molecules also leave their traces. And so a characteristic spectrum is created, the fingerprint of the planet in question. No two planets are the same, and so their atmospheres are different too. The problem is that existing telescopes are still too small to capture sufficient light from faraway planets. But that will change. So scientists are already drawing up a planet catalogue using a computer model. This model should be able to simulate the atmosphere of any particular planet. Easier said than done. The atmosphere of a planet on which there is life consists not only of biomolecules, but also of a mixture of other substances. And these are also found in the spectrum. That makes the search for life very much harder. All these molecules in the atmosphere of a planet more or less obscure our view of the really interesting traces of life. And what we're doing here is creating models. And we also make tools so that we can uncover these traces on these foreign planets again. With the atmosphere model they have developed, the astronomers need to simulate as many scenarios as possible before, one day, real measurements can be carried out. Then they can be of incalculable value to astronomers because they will make it easier to analyze the real measurements of the spectra. Curtain up for the atmosphere model. The scientists feed their model with the physical data, for example of water, oxygen, ozone, and methane. And they calculate the relevant spectrum. Now they are also adding sulfur dioxide and other inorganic compounds. The model can now supply spectra that are increasingly complicated and more difficult to interpret. The biosignatures they are looking for could get lost in a jumble of dips. Methane, for example, 
It can be produced by life and is present here, but it's hard to find. So the point of this simulation is to model every imaginable ingredient in the atmosphere. But they also want to include many other factors as well. How does the spectrum change if the planet is much smaller or much bigger than the Earth? What if the star is not like our sun, but bigger or smaller? What if the planet is closer to the star or more distant? Meaning it's much warmer or much colder. What if there are big volcanic eruptions on the planet? So the spectrum is not only formed by the chemical ingredients, but also by the astronomical and geological conditions. If their model is to function properly, the Heidelberg scientists have to take all that into account. And so their model is equipped with numerous controls. Each one can be adjusted as required. The size of the star and the planet. Their temperature. And even the volcanic activity and the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Each new setting will change the spectrum of the atmosphere and perhaps obscure the signals of the biomolecules. Even though the scientists try to include realistic scenarios and spectra, it is a model and has to be measured against reality. That is why Kaltenegger and her team need to test it. By using the spectrum of the only known planet on which life exists, the Earth. In the early 1990s, the satellite Galileo recorded a detailed spectrum of our Earth. The Max Planck scientists were able to reconstruct this spectrum very accurately with their model. That meant that it had passed an important test with flying colors. With these models, we can generate the air, the atmosphere on a wide variety of planets. And this catalogue of spectral fingerprints from other worlds will then help us to interpret the data which we shall now have available. The scientists at the MPI for Astronomy are well prepared. When, in a few years' time, the first atmospheres of exoplanets are measured, the comparison will begin. Does the measured spectrum match a simulated one? If it does, the scientists will know about the structure of the planet concerned and its atmosphere, and above all, whether life could exist there. We know of almost 1,800 exoplanets so far. When the new James Webb Space Telescope starts operating in space in a few years' time, the Heidelberg scientists will receive the real data from space that they so badly need. If in a measured spectrum we find oxygen, water and methane together, we know that on this other planet there could also be life like ours. And that would be the sensation of the millennium.